Salut mes amis! Today we're going to go over cables under their self weight. Up till now, we've ignored the effects of self weight, but at some point, all good things have to come to an end. Cables under self weight are like cables under distributed loads. To derive our statics relationships, we would again look at the equilibrium of a small segment. The biggest difference is that we want to use S, the cable length. That's because our loading function makes much more sense as a function of S than X because it's the weight of the cable per unit length. I'm opting not to go through the derivations. It's like what we did last time but with grosser math. Instead, we'll discuss the important relationships so we know how to use them on things like tests and assignments. Our equations come from our classic base case, a uniform symmetric cable suspended by two points. We put the origin of our system at the center where the slope of our cable is zero. The shape this cable makes, hanging under its own self-weight, has a special name. It's called a catenary. Here's our first relationship. With some fancy math, we would find that tan theta is equal to w naught s over th. Since tan theta is equal to the opposite over adjacent, we would expect it to be equal to the vertical force component divided by our horizontal force component. The total vertical force would be equal to the weight of our cable per unit length times its length s, while our horizontal component would be equal to th. So even without the fancy math, we can buy into this relationship. And in the bottom right, we see that again, our maximum tension happens when we have our maximum angle. Our second relationship is this guy, which gives the length of our cable from the origin as a function of x. And know that h isn't a typo, it really is a hyperbolic function. Your calculator may have a function for it, or you could expand it. This S that we find is useful for plugging into the first relationship we looked at. Our last relationship is the deflection curve. It describes the shape of the freely hanging cable. We'll often use it with the boundary condition that X is equal to span over 2 to help us solve problems. Let's do a quick example so you can see these guys in action. We have a symmetric cable suspended from two points, and it's loaded with just the self-weight. We know that the maximum angle the cable makes is 43 degrees, and the cable has a weight of 30 pounds per foot. The total cable length, we're told, is 76 feet, and we're asked to find the horizontal tension, the maximum tension, and the cable seg. Our first step is going to be to set up our coordinate system. Since our system is symmetric, putting our origin in the center allows us to use the four relationships we've introduced. In part A, we want to find the horizontal tension. This shows up in literally all of our equations, but only the first one has it as the only unknown. In this equation, we need an angle and a cable length. We know the maximum angle, and we know that that angle occurs at the support. So we need to know the cable length from the origin to the support. That would be half the total cable length. Now we can rearrange and solve for our constant horizontal tension. To the nearest pound, we get 1,223. Now that we have our horizontal tension, finding our maximum tension is easy. We just plug our numbers into the next relationship. We get that our maximum tension is 1,672 pounds. The last thing we're looking for is our cable seg. That's our H value. We're going to use our last relationship with a boundary condition. With our coordinate system, when x is equal to half the span length, our y value is equal to h. 
Now we can plug those into our equation and solve. We get that our cable has a sag of one foot. Great job jumping into these new relationships today. Come back next time for more examples and our last video in this series.